Imagine I'm a new customer. I just purchased a Lumigen Radiance Pro. What are the basic steps that I need to go through to get it up and running and start having it help out my display? First of all, you need to choose very good HDMI cables. HDMI cables, they determine how well your system is going to work. Mm -hmm. For passive cables from your sources to the Lumigen, Lumigen to the audio processor, depending how you hook it up, you could put the Lumigen after the audio processor. Those should all be 48 gigahertz passive three meter cables from a name brand. It doesn't really matter the brand, but the 48 gigahertz, we're running at 18, but the getting the 48 gigahertz three meters, I call it's the Goldilocks solution. The HDMI porridge is just right at three meters. Okay. So that's the very first thing. If you buy the right cables, you're going to have a much easier time. Mm -hmm. And then going from the Lumigen to the projector, we recommend a hybrid fiber cable of some kind, 18 gigahertz, not 48. Opposite of the passes because they have active buffers. If mm -hmm. you choose a 48 gigahertz, some projectors don't like the faster edge rates. And I tell people HDMI is not a connectivity problem, it's a physics problem. Okay. And you know how hard those can yes. be. So <laughs> oh, you need the right annoying. cable. That's the very first thing. Okay, just to rewind for everyone out there, we're talking passive cables between your source to the Lumigen, but an active or hybrid active cable from the Lumigen to your display or projector. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. Okay. And so the having, even on a short distance, we recommend a fiber cable because that gives a pristine signal at the begin at the input of the projector. And for some reason, a lot of projectors inputs aren't quite as good as like an audio processor or some other device. So okay. we recommend the fiber cable. Then the next step is to decide, do you want the Lumigen to do the switching or the audio processor or AVR you have to do the switching? That choice is a fundamental choice in how things are going to work. We have a lot of customers that I've already got my AVR set up. Can I just send its output to the Lumigen and then the Lumigen to my projector or okay. television? Certainly that works. Okay. Um, we have our 4242 in, two out. And so you could actually have a choice. A lot of people will have like two sources. Apple TV and a Blu-ray player. And if you do that, you could put us before with that product or us after the audio processor. That's a major choice that you need to do. Either one works. Okay, and switching, just to be clear for everyone out there, basically means using the Lumigen as a hub. So if you have your Apple TV, uh, Sony PlayStation, you can feed them all into the Lumigen. Yes. And then use that as a switcher to select what source you're going to be using, whether it's your Apple TV or your gaming system. Or you can run that all those sources into your AVR and then output from the AVR into the Lumigen. Yeah. So that's your first step of yeah. deciding what to do. And as you said on a previous podcast, the Lumigen can be the central hub of your system yep. and do all the control. Then we can send uh, split audio out to the audio processor, video out to the projector, and get the best performance for each. The 4000 series, which is an excellent product and it actually reduces jitter, but our 5000 series, I put 30 some linear power supplies in there to isolate all the electronics and the jitter on the output is very low. We typically get about 10 picoseconds of jitter. So that product, even though it doesn't process audio, can improve audio and we're showing people and they're, they're actually saying, Jim, you're underselling how much improvement you get running through the 5000 series for my audio. And when you say jitter, can you summarize that in 10 words? For <laughs> yes, you, you want to stay, the digital analog converters have to have a clock. It's basically lockstep clock. Mm -hmm. If that clock varies from cycle to cycle, one cycle slightly slower, one cycle slightly longer, that is called jitter. And you want that to be as close to zero as you right. can. And we measure about 10 picoseconds, which is extremely low for an HDMI device okay. to improve the audio. So there's some pre-setup uh, decisions you have to make on which Lumigen you're going to get. If you're going to put us after the audio processor, the 4000 series is the choice because okay. you don't need the D jitter. If you're going to want to put us and improve your audio, then the 5000 series is your There you go. So there's your roadmap. If you're going after 4000 before 5000, make sure you have quality HDMI cables. You can contact Jim and ask him for advice. We have a HDMI test bench uh, show on YouTube where we review cables with Meridio equipment. Uh, to, to validate their operational capabilities. Uh, so you can look there, uh, use either of those sources, 
I would probably just call Jim up and ask him what his suggestion is because he's the guy with the product and he knows what's working with his product. Uh, and then decide if you're going to put it before uh, before your AVR, essentially, or after. The, the Lumigen is a plug-and-play device. So if you have a 16 by 9 screen, a typical projector from Sony or JVC, um, other brands too, are usually going to give you in the area of 80 to 100 nits. That's just a measurement of how bright it is. Mm -hmm. That's what you get if you've got a modest, um, reasonable size screen and a reasonable projector brightness, you're going to get in that range. Okay. If you have a 16 by 9 screen, you can plug the Lumigen in and start up because we have presets for the typical case. So that's it. You plug it in, turn it on, and it'll yes. start doing its magic? That's for the 16 by 9 case. Okay. The, the key thing that we say is you basically take your projector, put it in 16 by 9 mode, mm -hmm. and then you zoom to the width of the screen. And then our setup process, we have a setup slide set, which is step by step by step. And I have novices who say, I know nothing about video. I went through it step by step, and I've got an amazing picture. Wow. That easy? Yes. Okay. That's probably comforting to somebody out there. <laughs> yes. So we have people <laughs> who are... Play. The, the Lumigen is a very powerful, professional-level level device. And mm -hmm. so we have a lot of features most people are never going to touch. Mm -hmm. But they're there. So we're actually looking at, we're going to do a simplified menu so that for 90%, 95% of the people, you don't have to look at all the extra features you don't need. I recommend people do the manual e step. That's actually discussed in the setup slides. I don't think we need to go into detail because some devices like some 2K uh, satellite receivers or um, cable boxes, they do not process 4K EDAs properly. Hmm. So we have workarounds. Okay. And so, but most people don't need those workarounds. And if you do run into something like, hey, my 2K you know, satellite box, I'm not getting any audio. That's because they didn't read the EDA properly. Right. And, and that's get diving into HDMI issues. Yes. When you hear about people having HDMI issues, EDID is frequently a problem area. Yes. And you're saying that you have workarounds. Yes. We can manually work. program. But most people don't need to worry about that. Let's say you've got a 240 screen, which is very common in theaters, home cinemas. I have one. <laughs> yes, so do I. Um, again, this first step, zoom to the width of the projector. Okay. Then... When you get that done, what you're going to do is we have to adjust the height. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to go to the output menu and we're going to the style menu. This is in step by step, so you don't have to remember this. You just get the setup slide set. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go here and we're going to shrink the top down. We would shrink it down by about 12% on the top and 12% on the bottom for a 235, 240 range. Okay. And then you just do this manual. You can up arrow and down arrow to change the image, um, or you can enter it digitally. So if you know I want 12.14%, you can enter that. And if you say, oh, that's not enough, I can enter 12.34 or something. So you adjust the height. And what I say is you adjust the width to the screen width plus a, just a small overscan. Okay. And the screen height and at the bottom uh, top you do the same thing, slight overscan. So we would we would adjust. If you have a 240 screen, right. that's your first step right there. Right. After you do that, we can set the output aspect ratio. Again, okay. this in the style menu, and we can set the aspect ratio. Now, if they're seeing the screen, we have output aspect per input aspect. But you can, instead of that, you can actually go and say, I just want one, one aspect. That's typically what you would do. Single output aspect. I would enter uh, 240 and press OK. And notice that it says 16 by 9. So if you told it it was 24, we're going to size the 16 by 9 image correctly ah, for your screen. So it automatically switches. Correct. Essentially. So Correct. based on what content you're watching, if it's a 240 movie mm -hmm. or a 16 uh, by 9 movie, it'll automatically know that and put that image up on, yes. on the screen for you. Okay. Correct. If we turn on auto aspect, which is a great feature, it will automatically detect what the image is mm -hmm. and select it. So we've selected our 240 image and we've set the height properly. We go in and we turn on auto aspect. 
And again, this is all discussed in the setup slides, so you don't have to remember all of this. So we do auto aspect, we turn it on, we select image, we have sticky overwrite. So let's say uh, I want to watch this content a little bit differently. I want to shrink it down or whatever. Right. You can say, if I override the auto aspect, turn it off temporarily, and that would be sticky override. Nonlinear stretch. Some people want to take 16 by 9 content and fill their screen. Sure. Not something that I like to do, but it's, if you want to do it, you can do that. You just turn, basically, you turn on nonlinear stretch. Okay. Letterbox yeah. control. Let's say I have a 16 by 9 television, but I want to fill the screen with 240 content. Mm -hmm. Letterbox control set to zoom would give me the center 16 by 9 section of a 240 movie. Oh, cool. That's the simplest way to get that. There's other ways that are more uh, allow you more control, but mm -hmm. if you do that, we'll just fill the screen with your 240 content, your 20 content. We'll just zoom it to fill your screen. You're cropping, you're losing content, but most movies are shot protected for 16 by 9, which just means the key information for the movie is in that section. Okay. So if you have a bottom-up masking screen, mm -hmm. you can do letterbox control top. And we'll put the, all aspect ratios at the topmost part of the screen. Or I just want it to be as high as so the people in the back can see better. Uh huh. Or I can do bottom. Let's say I have a top-down masking screen. I put all the content, active content, at the bottom at of the, the bottom. screen. Okay. And that works very well for masking screens. Okay. When you're doing masking, if you have a limited number of memories for your masking, you can merge the 178, 185 so they actually are treated as the same. I can make them merge to 185 or 4x3 or 185 or 178. Mm -hmm. And then here, uh, merge 235 and 240. Now, here you come to the point where people ask me, do I want a 235 screen or a 240 screen? My choice would always be a 240 screen. Okay. Why is that? Because most of the movies are 240. 240, okay. Now, the other thing is, is if you say everything and I merge 235 into 240, I'm just cropping a percent or two at the top and a percent or two at the mm -hmm. bottom of 235. Mm -hmm. I don't have any blank pixels. If I choose 235, a 240 movie is going to have a little sliver of black at the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you're going to want to get rid of that if you can. And then this use graphics flag. This is specific for the Kaleidoscape Strato. It has a uh, report content type metadata. So it's a it's kind of an advanced feature, but if you have a strato, you set this, and in the strato you report that content, and then for their menus, which some of which don't look anything like any aspect ratio, sure. they just say, hey, we're active, and we know you program this to say, if it's on, it's a 240, 235, oh, cool. or 178. So if you, if you have a CinemaScope screen, or a mm -hmm. 240 screen, that will then project the menu system, right. the, the yeah. library system and everything in that aspect. Yes, yeah, you just have screen. to set the Kaleidoscape up to uh, the 235, 235 letterbox mode okay. and say report content type metadata. That's an advanced kind of topic, but it's, uh, I don't actually know if I, that one particular one is described, but always you can call Lumigen, you can email Lumigen. We will give you support, whether you are a dealer whether you're a customer, whether you're a prospective customer, we'll talk about these features sure. and you don't need to get an appointment. Okay. And so that is the base setup. Well, Jim, thanks so well, much. Thank you. Really appreciate you taking time today. And folks out there, if you have any questions, you can contact Jim. Sales at Lumigen.com or support at Lumigen.com. And we'll, we'll do our best. And if you don't hear back from me, it's not because I'm ignoring you. Our spam filter sometimes filters out people's okay. emails that it doesn't know. And so just, you know, call or text and uh, let us know, hey, I sent an email. Here's my email. Go search for it. Okay, perfect. Very good. Awesome. All right, Jim, till next time, really appreciate it. Thank you.